Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Babylon Eyes episode with myself, Mike, and Sloth. And today we're breaking down another rumour of transfer, which is the potential arrival of the Leeds winger, Wilfred Nonto, or uh, the 19-year-old Italian. Um, really exciting talent, uh, a young talent, something, again, we want to start profile a little bit more. And the rumours come out from the mirror that we are holding an interest in the Leeds winger and he, I think he's been on our radar for a little bit now since maybe last mid-January. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if we do move on him because obviously Leeds have gone down. Initial thoughts, guys. What do you make of him, firstly, as a player? Because he's 19 years old. He made about 23 appearances last season in the Premier League. Um, had some injury problems, was in and out of the team with their managerial changes. So what are your thoughts on him as a player so far? I mean, at such a young age. Do you want to go slow? Yeah, I mean, I, I really, I really like what I've seen of him. He's very pacey, he's very direct. Um, he's got that sort of terrier-like work ethic where he does get stuck in, and you know, that's one of the detriments that we will cover. But I think overall, I, I really like this direction of of um, of signing, and it's nothing. Um, to do with sort of the just just the youth side of things the fact he is so young it's more to do with the fact that he is pacey he's direct he's got the work ethic and I think that's that's what we really kind of lack on that left hand side to a certain degree yeah what about if you were kind of looking at it from the perspective he's 19 years old Mike I know you had him on our Babylon Iron's Twitter thread of summer recruitments potentially Mm -hmm. to come in so what what is it you kind of particularly drawn to when you put him on that list because it's a very although it's a very extensive list is a very limited list in terms of what you want in terms of our recruitment so why did he kind of pass the checks for you as, as someone to potentially sign this summer well, well firstly we we went you know more down the lines of a statistical approach you know meeting certain criteria as to what he can do on the ball what he does defensively and what he can do in attack so it, it has to meet kind of certain thresholds to kind of essentially work in a David Moyes system. Also, you know, needs to be plausible as a potential uh, player to come in. So on that basis, he kind of fit, fit into some criteria. And then you kind of go for like the, you know, the eye test. Um, now, most people will remember or may not remember him coming on against us in the home game where Leeds were appalling. Yeah. Um, now, that game felt very much for the, for the likes of, of Notto, um, very much like the 5 0 game that we suffered against Nottingham Forest, where he just threw in a bunch of youngsters and went, ah, just go do what you can now. It kind of felt like that. You sent on a five, I think, five seven uh, player um, who traditionally, when he's played up top, has played within a two. He essentially sent him out to the Wolves, really, and it, we were playing against, you know, fairly physical. Centre backs, uh, he pretty much had no real chance. Everything that came into him was loose, and there was nothing really to, to exploit his pace given to him. Um, however, in the, the game just after I think January time when we played Leeds, he was destroying us, uh, essentially playing in a Lingard role, yeah. uh, just playing off the centre forward. He scored a goal, his pace was so difficult for us to deal with. And he, in that first 45 minutes, he just took us to the cleaners. Um, but Leeds, <laughs> Leeds being Leeds, they were profligate. They didn't really take any of their chances, and his pace in itself just absolutely took us to pieces. I think even his goal, um, I think he got in on the back of a Declan Rice, um, and then had a really good low shot with it with his left foot straight past the goalkeeper. The other thing is he can play pretty much anywhere across that front line. Um, left wing, right wing. Uh, it can play up top, but you need to play, definitely have to play him in a two. Where do you and see his best play... position being out of those, Mike? Although he's versatile, is that out on that left-hand side? I, I personally think his best role is playing off of a centre-forward. The main reason being is you can tend to find more space. And in transition, if you want pace, you want it in the most lethal positions, which is in the centre because yeah. then he is driving at the heart of the defence, driving directly at goal. If you're on the wing, he's either got to cut in, um, you know, or again, he's wide. You can essentially, you can divert someone away from goal if you're, if you're there. And 
if you put someone like that in the center, as we saw with the likes of Lingard, when you have someone with pace who is direct, who can carry the ball, uh, it really makes a difference. Slough, what about you then? Because, again, he's still 19 years of age, um, a raw talent. Is it, again, we've got a lot, we've said this on many shows before, but we've got a lot of stuff to cover this summer. Um, and we know we're going to have to be very particular with how we spend our money due to FFP regulations and also just the sheer amount of positions we need to cover. Given that we already have, say, Ben Rama and Corne out on that left-hand side at the moment, even some like four nows, as Moyes would probably play him there, is this something that would maybe happen towards the end of the transfer window for you? Or would you like to try and move early on it? Because, again, how much would you be kind of looking to spend on someone who's 19 years old and hasn't got that much experience under his belt yet to kind of push his price tag that high? I, I definitely feel like it's one we should wait to see what happens with. Um, I think there could potentially be quite a few players at the end of the window in these clubs who... Yeah they might potentially be looking to get out the door on both ends of the spectrum. You know, the club might be looking to get what they can for them, but also, you know, this is a young guy who's on the edge of the Italian squad and he's going to want to, he's not going to want to be in the championship. He's going to want to be in a top league. So if, even if it was just a loan deal, I think that'd be really smart. My one sort of reserve is for the money that is being mentioned i do think the sort of 18 million pound mark is quite significant and there are i mean there are quite a lot of exciting players in that leads attack when you look mm-hmm. at it someone like uh, somerville who whenever i've seen him you know he he does look to carry the ball really well and he can finish but also someone like Harrison, who, who you know, we've spoken about before and and our name has been linked with a lot. Sinistera, who I'm a huge fan of. They have got a lot of talent that I think um, clubs will be looking at. So 18 million, I probably wouldn't go for it. I think there's a lot of work that needs to be done. And as you mentioned, we're quite strong on that side. So... While he is versatile, he, he can move across um, the attack. I think I'd probably just look and see what sort of deals we can get. Because if someone, say, like Suleimana is available for um, you know £18 million pounds or cover what Southampton paid for him, then I, th- I would rather go for that because that yeah. is just that bit more, bit more pace, bit more direct attitude. Well, if we're kind of looking at the stats behind it, before we get into the full scout report that you produced, Mike, a little comparison of some of the statistics from last season between Gononto and Ben Rama, um, just so the viewers are aware of similarities or what perhaps Ben Rama did a little bit better. So you can kind of see here the percentile that both of them landed in for certain stuff. You can kind of see but they're pretty similar. Um, just Ben Rama did a, a little bit more. Um, that's just, again, due to the amount of games he played and also just being a little bit better last season. Similar in how they carry the ball, um, similar how they like to dribble. Um, obviously, non-penalty goals, XG, XA, you can look for yourself. Um, but key passes, I think that's something he would need to develop a little bit more. Um, ben Rama will play some of those key passes through, uh, and it's something Nonto would need to develop into his game. And offensive actions, you can see Ben Rama in that you know really high percentile. And again, Nonto, not bad, but just not what Ben Rama's been. But you can kind of see by the how the graph shapes up, they're pretty similar. Um, but Ben Rama obviously just edging it in terms of the stats. So, Mike, into your scout report card. Um, let's break down through it what his positives are and what is you know things he would need to improve on if he was to come to West Ham. So, this was on our Twitter page. Um, I'll let you talk through this because this is your baby. And uh, yeah, talk us through it. Yeah. So, <clears throat> you know, uh, he is a full Italian international, as Loss said, and you know, in and around that team. So. The chance was taken on him whilst he was in the Austrian league. Um, at the moment, Italy are struggling for strikers, and it's one of those where Mancini's had to be maybe a little bit more open to to what's on offer, uh, which is why he he went for him so young. But also, it's the fact that he offers something that Italy doesn't, in the sense of incredibly tricky, uh, incredibly pacey, young uh, kind of winger slash. Uh, att- you know, attacking midfielder, support striker, however you want to kind of term it. There are a few, there are, I would say, probably a fair few similarities with how you know we deployed Lingard as to how he probably has been best utilised for Leeds when he's played 
off the centre forward, he's looked far more um, kind of threatening as a player. There are areas obviously he needs to improve, and that's because one, because of his age, uh, he is again he is a uh, product of Inter Milan's youth system. So it's not like he's come from terrible stock, or and you know he went to Austria and then and then kind of lucked <laughs> his way through. The, the, he is a kid of of good stock and went in search of first team football, which has obviously resulted in him coming to the Premier League by the age of nineteen. But you know he he does work hard off the ball. He his pace is incredibly threatening. He's got a very good uh, kind of uh, you know feet. He, he way he's able to carry possession. He's very you know he's very strong at that. Very good at that. When I say he's very strong, I'm not necessarily talking about from a physical point of view. I mean, in terms of the, the ability to consistently carry possession is, is a great attribute. Obviously, strength-wise, he can be overpowered because he is of, of quite a small diminutive stature. But this is the point of he's the type of player that you play off the cuff of a or on the uh, you know the, the shoulder of another player and you feed balls into him to to exploit those half spaces and those gaps in possession, because once he then is gone, it's very hard for a player to stop him without actually fouling him, because the moment he accelerates, he's so quick, your only result really is to either lunge in for a tackle to try and win it in that way, grab him by the shoulder or grab his shirt. So when he's gone, he's very much gone. You you don't have much of a chance unless Hmm. he slows himself down and comes up to you, because that's, again, because of his age, maybe his decision-making is not always there. I think we have to also caveat some of those uh, kind of statistics because he was playing in a Leeds team that was largely dysfunctional and form started to dip for quite a few. Yeah. Um, and he did also, you know, in games against Man United, I think in the cup, he was exceptional at times, came off the bench and, and lit the game up, which caused, you know, a lot of problems for them. With him, I look as a player that is your buying potential. Because if he uh, has the conviction in which to continue, even at 18 million, it is potentially quite a bit of money when you look at what we need and maybe where that money can be spent anywhere else. Mm -hmm. He arguably could be worth a lot more. Um, You know, even if it's only just, I say, only 10 million. But again, you could potentially add another 10 million on that. A club just coming up from the championship may go, you know what, he's done well at West Ham, but he's not breaking in. Maybe we'll say give that money to him if they if West Ham was to be willing to sell him. You know, he is a player's likely to keep whatever value we buy him for and and then go, you know, a stage further in terms of the money we can make on him. So when would you go in for him, Mike? Would you would you do what Sloth says, maybe wait a little bit before pulling the trigger on it? Or would you go in early? Yeah, I would wait. Um, you know, I've seen it on Twitter anyway. I think at the moment any link and rumour should be taken with a pinch of salt. Until or, Timmy comes in, and yeah, until Timmy comes in, because uh, until then, there's no real kind of movement or worth moving forward. And again, the links to players that are David Moyes' players. Uh, if you guys, if everyone follows um, Hammers Chat, uh, uh, Gonzo made a fantastic point of there is no point in buying a player that Moyes wants, likes, or even suggests. Really, I'm paraphrasing, obviously, mainly because. He's likely not seen past next year. And the whole yeah. point of the technical director is to set long-term plans and long-term vision for the club. So buying players that maybe the manager is identifying, you obviously listen to that because he is the incumbent. But ultimately, if he isn't going to... That play or those players aren't going to be viewed as a long-term option for the club. Do you think this not so link is coming from Moyes? I think it's coming because it's a... We're looking at relegated teams. Mm. And... I think that's one of the reasons why we're waiting is because the relegated teams that he says yet don't need to sell. Yeah. There's no uh, driving force in which to sell those players, other than maybe the players themselves asking. And those players don't always necessarily go until pre-season has started or you're at the end of the window when those players are like, I, can, I do not want to play in the EFL. I, I want to be above that. And maybe their wages, and that's when clubs tend to be more flexible. So, I feel there are links like with him, where it's a player we're interested in, but it's a player what we will wait for, mm. purely because he's from a relegated team, and it's someone that arguably could come cheaper at the end of the window, or something like a loan deal could be possible, as opposed to an actual purchase. 
I think also because we've been linked with likes of Harvey Barnes, obviously they're probably going to be above in the pecking order in terms of how we move. So, and we've although... looked at Jack Harrison as well. So we've looked at Leeds, yeah, and he's potentially cheaper than say Jack Harrison is, and because of his age, we're thinking it's maybe a, a something that we get, a player where we will earn more money on if he gets to say Jack Harrison's level. Jack Harrison's what I think about twenty five, twenty six. Hmm. he gets to that level in the next two years then the argument is well maybe he has a his ceiling can go higher and therefore we're worth be worth a lot more money and him being a european player maybe has more european appeal than maybe say a player like a, a jack harrison for instance hmm. so just to kind of sum up everything we've kind of said there nonto a good player one for development one that could potentially develop into a very 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 top talent but for you guys, you wouldn't particularly want to move straight away because, A, um, we've probably got other stuff to organise in the club before we start doing that, as we've seen with the lack of transfer activity at the moment. And B, it's just sometimes you have to play that waiting game, especially with these championship clubs that have just been relegated from the Premier League. You know, I remember it happened with Watford the season before. Um, I think Dennis moved on really late to Forest. So these kind of moves do happen. You just have to be a little bit patient and hopefully no one's picked him up by then. But... Yeah, let us know what you guys think in the comments. Would you be happy to see Nonto? Um, and guys, any final thoughts, Sloth? Anything? I think just um, that lead side is a is an exciting one to watch. They have got a lot of a uh, lot of potential talent. Uh, they have got a few American boys in there that I think um, could really be interesting uh, next season. And in terms of the the sort of players they have recruited, I, th- I think it's been down to just a, a rudderless ship almost at times. Um, I don't think the relegation is that big of a reflection on a number of them. And I, yeah, I think we need to sort of play a smart game where we wait towards that end of the window, see what's happening. If anyone else pulls the trigger, we move quickly. Um And just try and be a little bit smarter. If he's available for say, 15 million pounds I'd, I'd move for him just because I think that's a smart deal um, it would also allow you to move others on or ease the burden on the squad a little bit but I think I think it's um, one to maybe look at towards the end of the window yeah sure I think it's going to be an interesting one just to watch because we really don't know how we're going to approach things once Tim Steinen does come in. That's the big thing for me, is it could be a complete change in overhaul of, of the direction. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens with that. But yeah, let us know in the comments what you'd think of Nonto if he was to come in. Would you maybe wait a little bit before making the move? Or would you like us to try and get him early before other teams come in for him? Let us know in the comments. Leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you are new. And lads, until next time. Come on, you, on you irons. <laughs>